I actually had a, an issue to address. You stated earlier that religion is actually an attack on reason and rationale and that we must move it out of the way. It's only here for morality is sort of faith-based only. But uh, from my studies, uh, from what I know from school, all the major philosophers were uh, Christian, whether that would be Isaac Newton, scientist, or C.S. Lewis. Um, in addition, morality, this, this abstract notion of morality by faith only is actually supported through something called natural law. I'm sure you gentlemen are aware of it, whereby some things which are set about by our religion reflect like a healthy lifestyle. I think this is actually across uh, many religions, not just Christianity or Judaism for that matter. Can you please address that issue and the correlation with uh, religion and rationale? Um, well, first take the essence of religion and religious morality, um, <clears throat> which is basically the idea that it's right because God says so, or that you should do it because God says so. So you can take the story of Abraham and Isaac, because it really, this reveals the essence of religious morality. God commands him to sacrifice his son, to kill his son. Now why? Why should he do it? This command is unintelligible to him, but he's to do it anyway. <clears throat> what possible value could he gain in killing his own son? He can't figure out any, but he's to do it anyway. So he has no rational conviction of why this is right, and he can see no value to gain, and yet he's to do it. Because God says it's right, so it must be right. So it's to toss out your judgment and your choice of values. And that's the, it's to toss your rational judgment and your rational choice of what is in my self-interest. It's to toss reason aside and to obey, to have faith, to do your duty. The essence of religion is to toss reason aside and have faith. <clears throat> Whether you're looking in the field of knowledge or the field of morality. So it's one or the other. It's either I go by my rational judgment and my rational selection of values, or I abandon that and go by what someone commands me. I mean, some alleged being in another dimension through the voices of the, whatever religious prophet or leader he's supposed to follow. So it's, it's, I mean, they're complete. It's faith versus reason. They're complete opposites. <clears throat> and there have been, in the history of the West, rational approaches to science, to morality, that are non-religious. And that's what you find in ancient Greece. It's only after the rise of Christianity and the attempt then from the Renaissance onwards to secularize the human mind, to get rid of religion, that you find a, so. I mean, what you're calling a fusion of reason and faith. And it, these are thinkers who are trying to get rid of faith. <clears throat> They're trying to go by reason. But they're unable to do so. And there, there are many tragedies in philosophy post-Renaissance. I mean, you can look at Descartes, Leibniz, Newton, Locke, uh, <clears throat> Hume. In one way or another, they're trying to get faith out and to go by reason. But what always ends up happening is <clears throat> it collapses into skepticism, that we can't gain knowledge and we can't find a moral code. That if we go by reason, Anything goes. So they're unable to do it. But that is not the same as saying there's a fusion of the two. It's an attempt to secularize the human mind, and it fails. And that, again, is precisely one of Ayn Rand's great achievements. She's, since the time of the Greeks, she's the first philosopher who advocates reason and doesn't collapse either into skepticism or subjectivism, into this kind of anything goes mentality that you see on the left. <clears throat> but it takes a lot of intellectual work in order to be able to do that. Um, so in the principle, faith and reason are distinct, they're opposites, even if they're found commingled in a particular thinker, which you see all over the West after the rise of Christianity. <clears throat> It, and to the extent that these thinkers really do achieve something, like Isaac Newton, is it is in that realm of their life where they are completely dedicated to reason and they don't let faith in. So nothing that Isaac Newton really achieved came as an inspiration from God to him. It was all worked out from the facts of reality, looking at reality and using his reason in order to induce truths 
about the real world. It was not through mystical revelation. You don't get science, you don't get calculus, which he was one of the people invented, I think, uh, from meditation. You get it from the applying your mind to the prop to, to reality, to facts. Uh, so to the extent that there were achievements, even by people who advocated for Christianity, is the extent to which they didn't allow Christianity, didn't allow faith to enter into their lives. And the more dedicated they truly were to faith and to Christianity, the fewer achievements they could have had and the less success they could have had.